What we now need to talk about is the power rating of the resistor and the xenodiode itself. This resistor here is rated for 1 watt and the xenodiode has a power rating, a maximum power rating of 0 0.5 watts. And this is important because we need to make sure we stay well below the power rating of both of these components because if we go above that we will essentially fry them or they will get very very hot and that's not good. We need to make sure we are within the limits and ideally well below the power rating of these components. So the xenodiode is rated 0 0.5 watts. The job of this resistor is to limit the current to the xenodiode. But let's just say that this resistor here is a 10 ohm resistor. Okay. We need to be able to calculate the power that is going to be dissipated by the resistor and the xenodiode. To do that, we need to calculate the current that will be flowing through this circuit if this resistor was a 10, a 10 ohm resistor. And to calculate the current flowing through the circuit, we need to know the other two values. We need to know the voltage and we need to know the resistance. Well, we're saying the resistance is 10 ohms and the voltage is what will be dropped across it. So if this xenodiode is a 5.1 volt xenodiode, then 5.1 volts will be dropped across it because that's how it regulates. It regulates it at 5.1 volts. So 5.1 volts, and let's say we're supplying, uh, let's just say 14 volts. We're supplying 14 volts to the circuit. 5.1 volts is being dropped across the xenodiode. Therefore, the rest of the voltage is being dropped across that resistor. So 14 minus 5.1 gives us approximately 9 volts. Let's say 9 volts to keep things rounded. 9 volts will be dropped across that resistor and it is 10 ohms. So we have our two values. So the equation to calculate current going through the resistor is I equals V over R or the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. 9 volts divided by our 10 ohm resistance gives us an answer of 0 0.9 amps. But what does that mean in terms of power? Power is measured in watts. So to understand the power that will be dissipated by that resistor, we need to use the power equation, P equals IV. And that just means that the power is equal to current times the voltage. Okay, the voltage dropped across that resistor is nine volts, as we said before, and we've got 0 0.9 amps. So the power is equal to 0 0.9 amps times 9 volts gives us 8.1 watts. That resistor is a 1 watt resistor and it would be dissipating 8.1 watts. Basically, it would be on fire. So that's not good. The xenodiode is only rated for 0 0.5 watts. And the current running through a series circuit is always the same through every component. So that 0 0.9 amps will be going through that resistor and through the xenodiode. So the xenodiode we know is dropping the rest of the voltage, 5.1 volts. So what's the power going through that? Well, P equals IV, 0 0.9 amps times 5.1 volts gives us 4.59, let's say 4.6 watts. 4.6 watts through a 0 0.5 watt xenodiode is obviously way too much. That xenodiode is just going to break very quickly. And this is why we need to be careful when we choose a resistor for our circuit. So obviously we need to limit the current in order that the resistor and the xenodiode are dissipating power way below what they are rated to dissipate. To make sure that we stay as cool as possible and to make sure that we protect the diode and the resistor. Now I've just adjusted the voltage back to approximately 12 volts. 5.1 volts is still being dropped across that xenodiode. So that means that what is being dropped across that resistor is now 12 volts minus 5.1, 6.9 volts. So if we measure across that resistor, 6.9 volts it is. Now, what if we want to be able to calculate the resistor that we need to limit the current to this circuit. We've said we want to limit the circuit to 20 milliamps. So let's go ahead and calculate the resistor value that we need in order to actually limit this circuit to 20 milliamps. So all we need to know is two things. The voltage that will be across the 
resistor, which we've just said is the 12 volts minus 5.1 across that zener, which is 6.9 volts across that resistor. So 6.9 volts, we need to use the equation to calculate the resistance. So the, re the equation is R equals V over I, or the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. The voltage we know is 6.9 volts, and we just divide that by the current we've chosen, which is 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. And this gives us an answer of 345 ohms. 345 ohms is the resistor that we need to use to limit this circuit to 20 milliamps. Now, you won't find a standard value resistor for 345 ohms. So in this circuit here, I have a 330 ohm resistor. So we'll have slightly higher current, maybe 21 milliamps. And let's see if that worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my multimeter in series with this circuit so we can measure the current flowing through it. And there we go, you can see on the multimeter, we are quite close to our 20 milliamps. So we have successfully limited the current to this circuit by calculating the resistor to limit the current to the circuit. Now, you may say, how do we actually put this to use? There's no point in having a voltage if we don't use it to power a load. Now, usually the load would be something quite low current. So maybe, say, a power supply for an integrated circuit or even something as small as a voltage reference. In this case, I'm actually going to use an LED for the load. And I've actually got a, a 5.1 volt Zener diode here, and this LED requires 3 volts, or thereabouts. So 5.1 volts is, is going to be too much for that LED. So let's go ahead and change that for a 3.3 volt Zener diode. Well, now we've got to think about something else, because we've limited the entire circuit to 20 milliamps. So if I introduce a load to this circuit, I'm going to draw current from that circuit. And that would be fine, but this LED requires 20 milliamps to light up pretty good. So 20 milliamps is being dissipated by this resistor and the Zener diode. So what I need is additional current through this circuit to ensure there is enough current for this LED and for the circuit to properly regulate. Otherwise, what will happen is the Zener diode will stop regulating because too much current is being drawn from it and it will struggle to supply the current to the load. So it's always good to add a slightly more current, although not too much, that when the load is disconnected, your resistor and Zener diode will be, dis will be dissipating too much power. You just need to add enough current enough additional current that it will power your load properly and also ensure that it's regulating the voltage properly. And so instead what I've decided is that I want 40 milliamps running through this circuit. I know that 40 milliamps is still way below the power rating of those components and to get 40 milliamps I already had 20. All I need to do is halve the resistance to from 330 ohms to 215 ohms or as close to 215 as I can get. In this case, I'm going to use this 200 ohm resistor. So I'll have slightly more current, but let's just check and see what current is running through it with this new 200 ohm resistor. There we go, we've got it about right, haven't we? We're 42, 42 milliamps. So now I can power this LED, which requires 20 milliamps, from this Zener diode, and there we go we have light. And let's just check the voltage across this Zener diode, which is 3.3 volts. We're getting approximately 3.23 volts. So near enough, we are successfully regulating the voltage to a load. This LED, otherwise it would be a voltage reference or a low current supply to an integrated circuit. Hopefully you did get something from this. There are always going to be videos coming from me, so make sure you do subscribe. If you are new to electronics, make sure you go ahead, go back and look at my Simply Electronics Basics playlist. Start from the beginning or wherever you need to. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and leave any comments that you have below.